the word was made flesh and we saw his glory when we saw his glory the word was made flesh dear friends welcome to this session where now we look at joseph when he arrives in egypt the last few sessions it was a time where we looked at his relationship with his family and how his father mourned for him and now he's alone in egypt a place that he's not familiar with a new environment new people new culture and he needs to adapt. Let us begin with a prayer. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God, our Father, in your mercy and love, we come before you. We thank you for the gift of life, but we also pray for moments where we feel all alone, lost, and lonely. Where we enter into places unfamiliar to us. Where we are expected to perform, even though we feel exhausted. We ask for your grace, we ask for your pardon, we ask for your love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we realize that Joseph is now alone. Joseph changes the environment. But again, you cannot change the environment and still remain the same. Mm -hmm. There are aspects of your life that will change. There's something in you that will change so that you can adapt to the new environment. What do you think about that? You know, the, the story that he he leaves his brothers, you know, and, and I, what I still argue that he was probably young when he left. You know, he leaves his, his brothers, he's relatively young, he's sold out, and he goes rightfully so into the foreign land. And they're probably different language, or maybe you could understood one would argue it's a different language and we will pick that up later on because when his brothers come back and they speak in the language they don't think joseph understands because they think this is just an egyptian who, who doesn't understand our language so he's lost his father he has already lost his mother by then and now he's lost his brothers and he's all alone and he feels like what do i do and the other issue that speaks to me is being shipped from the Ishmaelites to the uh, to the uh, to the Midianites and now to to the Egyptian. So he's moved from three different homes. It's like someone uh, coming from a, a, an adoption uh, process. You know, this family no, that family no, this family no, or someone going through rejection. Uh, I, I'm not good enough for you. Then you you leave me. I'm not good enough for you. Then you leave me. Somehow that hurts, and, and it dances one's image of self. But the author doesn't say much about Joseph in that regard. He doesn't tell us how this, how did this psychologically, emotionally drain or affected him. But rather, we hear that he goes into Egypt, and in Egypt, he sold into the house of a Potiphar, who was a eunuch. And we will unpack that he goes there into the house of the eunuch. But we'll look into that uh, later on. I also think that Joseph was in a season of mourning like his father. Mm -hmm. Because he's trying to find who he will become after this entire experience. But at the same time, there's no one who understands where he comes from. No one who understands his story. No one who understands that he was sold. And he was never loved by his brothers. But do you think he really understands what was going on in his life? Do you, do, do you think he was looking forward to what he would become? Or was he just stuck in the pain and the suffering? I feel like he was stuck. Because when we get to the story where he interprets the dreams of the cupbearer. And he says, remember me because I was removed from my family. Something like that. So you realize that he hasn't healed. He's stuck at the fact that he was removed and now he's in prison where he doesn't belong. And, and in, that, in that phrase, remember me for I was removed from my family. I can sense a sense of rejection. Don't forget me now. I've helped you out. Don't forget me. But we will talk to that when we speak to Joseph uh, 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 in prison. What, what I would like to unpack uh, is he sold into the house of Potiphar, who is a eunuch. And for those who do not know what a eunuch is, a eunuch is a man 
who works in the in 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 is 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 the ghost, you know, in the palace of the king, is going to the ghost, and because we know from old, na ba koskas na ba tuwa na ba ghost, a yunak umuntu ucheniwe. So if a cheniwe, he cannot perform his manly duties because that is in the protection of uh, of in in kosi na makoska in kosi na bawonge but then joseph is sent to work in the house of a eunuch where his wife stays do you see that the dilemma there mm -hmm. now you have a wife who has been married to a man who later on became a eunuch and so the man cannot perform the manly duties the only man around is a slave who's Joseph. Hence, Joseph is going to be accused of rape because the husband cannot do his duties towards his woman. That's a dilemma. A huge one. Now, go to the change in character. Now, Joseph arrives in this place as a slave. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are born to see he's slowly getting to where he should be. But to Kalala as a slave and being accused of something that he has never done. Mm -hmm. So questions cut, I think as we move up, maybe in places we want to be in life, there are times where we'll be tested, wrongfully tested at times. And go to a season it is in the just because people want to accuse us of those things. But how do you how, how do you deal with that? I mean, we are accused of things as and we are And to are stuck in that. Oh, they want to prove that they are innocent. They want to show everybody else I did not do it, and so they waste time and and they waste the resources in order to prove innocence. How do we deal with that as people? We don't need to prove ourselves all the time. I personally have been in a situation where I've been accused. But because now in WC Hambega cool, me trying to follow the tracks and prove that it's not what it, they mm -hmm. think it, it is will waste my time. So I decided no, the truth will unfold in time. And sometimes Sibana Lokuti, I have to prove it because I want my story to be heard. But it's not all the time where your story will be heard. Things will just transpire with time. No, we see we go na bandu abanga nenda ba whether right or wrong. And so you soon realize, we see trying to prove your innocence it's a waste of time. So try and live your life as best as you can. So now in this story we find Joseph being accused of rape. And and if you go back to the text. Uh, he runs out naked uh, and if and so everybody else believes because and how many people have become victims of that you know i'm thinking how many people have been accused of things they didn't do? How many people have lost their families of the things they didn't do? They've lost their jobs. You know, and so we have lost everything. How do you do that? And that's the story of our lives. And how many people have been stripped naked and never had a chance to actually tell it was it's not what you think it is? And Abanye ended up taking out their lives. Let's pray for those. If you've, if you've gone through that, if you've experienced that pain, when everybody else, by a call to Wednesday, but when Abiyaza went down, there's Joseph. But you know, the sad part is the silence of God. Because we are Uzubuti. If we Joseph and Gempela and Gempela walk on my pupil, I can't. I ain't in this. Who people who look good when he's being accused? 
Wachula when I need him the most. And, and he's going to end up in prison. Was God silent or was he there? I feel like he was there. But, Bwangeli also Joseph Abon. Ogokala, Osanda Fira, and then suddenly he's accused of Indengag. So it becomes very difficult. He's trying to find himself at the same time. And again, Abuzo Banzima to actually see that God is there. Ukonaganjan, Ulungulu, if you are allowing me to be humiliated. Ukonaganjan, if I'm trying to find my feet, but I find nothing. You know, in the silence of God, there's a story of Joseph and the rape. But in the silence of God, what is your story? What have you gone through? What pain, what anguish have you gone through? Leave us a comment. Subscribe. Share with a friend. Thank you for being with us. Let us now take this back to God in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we pray for each and every individual undergoing some form of humiliation in their lives for things that they have not done. We pray for those who are trying to find their wings, who are struggling to fly to the point where you want them to be. Be with them, enlighten them, and be their guide in their journey. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Word was made flesh. Then we saw His glory. We saw His glory when the Word was made flesh.